I'd switch pillows with you, but I'm allergic to sponge. I got a bad allergy to it. I've been sneezing all night with that thing. That's why I carry my own pillow. It's hyperallergenic. <clears throat> I had no idea those beer cans were going to blow like that. You left them on a vibrating bed. What did you think was going to happen? Well, it's been a long day. It just, it just didn't occur to me. <sighs> didn't occur to you, so I have to sleep in a puddle of beer. You want to switch? No, I just want to sleep. Me too. I am bushed. <sighs> Good night. Good night. Resuming at O'Hare Field, and flights will be moving out of there very shortly. If I don't clear my sinuses, I'll snore all night. Gee, if your kid spills his milk, what do you do, slap him in the head? What? 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 What is that supposed to mean? You're not a very tolerant person. Look, you've been under my skin since New York, starting with ripping off my cab. God, you're a tight ass. How would you like a mouthful of teeth? Oh, and hostile, too. Nice personality combination, hostile and intolerant. That's borderline criminal. Screw you. You spill beer all over the bed. You smoke. You, you, you mess up the bathroom. Well, who let you stay in the room? I even let you pay for it so you wouldn't feel like an intruder, which you most certainly are. Oh, oh I'm an intruder. Yes, you're an intruder. I was having a perfectly nice trip until you walked into my life. I walked into your life. Who was that who talked my ear off on the plane? Who was that? I'm curious. Well, who told you to book a room? I did out of the goodness of my dumb old heart. Boy, you're an ungrateful jackass. Well, go ahead, sleep in the lobby, see if I care. I hope you wake up so stiff you can't even move. You're no saint. You got a free cab, you got a free room. And someone who'll listen to your boring stories. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking, eventually I started reading a vomit bag? Didn't that give you some sort of clue, like, hey, maybe this guy's not enjoying it? You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are that are funny or or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. They're not even amusing accidentally. Honey, I'd, li I'd like you to meet Del Griffith. He's got some amusing anecdotes for you. Oh, and here's a gun so you can blow your brains out. You'll thank me for it. <sighs> I, I, I could tolerate any any insurance seminar. For days, I could sit there and listen to them go on and on with a big smile on my face. And I'd say, how can you stand it? And I'd say, because I've been with Del Griffith. I can take anything. And you know what they'd say? They'd say, I know what you mean. The shower curtain ring guy. Whoa. Well, it's, it's like going on a date with a chatty Kathy doll. I expect you to have a little string on your chest, you know, that I pull out and have to snap back. Except I wouldn't pull it out and snap it back. You would. And by the way, you know, when you're, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener.
You want to hurt me? Go right ahead if it makes you feel any better. I'm an easy target. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I could be a cold-hearted cynic like you. But I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you want about me. I'm not changing. I like, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. 